we got one last node to cover and that's the iteration end node. We could not use this node in our maple tree project because it currently only works in scenes without nested loops. So you can have multiple loops one after the other in a graph and the node will work, that's fine. But nested loops within loops are currently not supported. So for the demonstration of iteration n, I threw a quick example scene together. Here we have a loop which grows branches from a trunk and this is the same logic that we used in the maple tree. Now let's assume we want to give the branches a different material than the trunk. How could we do this? Because we learned that changing one parameter in a loop geometry node affects all subsequent iterations at the same time. This is what the iteration n node is for. The node outputs a value between 0 and 1 for the current iteration. You can basically forget about the 0 because an iteration of 0 means that nothing is grown and computed and the graph simply doesn't exist. So in this example we have two iterations. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5, which means the iteration n node will output a value of 0.5 for the first iteration, the trunk, and a value of 1 for the second iteration, which are the branches. If I increase the iterations to say 4 iterations, then it is 1 divided by 4, which results in a step size of 0.25. So the node would output 0.25 for the trunk iteration, 0.5 for the first branching level, and so on. Now, with this in mind, we can connect the iteration end node to any parameter that we want to vary throughout the iterations, and in our case, that's the material distribution. First, I'm going to add alternate materials to the node. I already added these materials into the scene before, and by default, Plant Factory randomly picks between all materials assigned to a node, and it does this by picking a random number between 0 and 1. And guess what? This is the same logic as with the iteration end node, just that Plant Factory starts counting from 0 in this case. So we have three alternate materials, which means the first material will be picked when the random number is between 0 and 0 0.33 and the second material will be picked if the random number is between 0 0.34 and 0 0.66 and so on and so forth. And now instead of using a random number for the material distribution, let's connect the iteration end node to the material distribution input. And immediately we get a distribution of materials per iteration level. Next, let me insert a filter for some fine-tuning. I need to change the filter bounds to 0 for both x and y. And with the knowledge that a material switch occurs at an interval of 0 0.33 and that our four iterations change at an interval step of 0 0.25, I can edit the curve to influence the output of the iteration end node and change the material distribution across the iterations. Okay, let me show you another example. You could use the iteration end node to blend between a minimum and maximum strength value for a parameter. So let me add some axis perturbation. And I now want to blend between a min and max strength across all branching levels. So first let's connect the strength parameter as a separate node. And this will be my minimum strength. Now I will insert a Blender node. Then I will copy paste the node and set it to a maximum strength and connect this as our max value to the Blender. Now to blend between those two values, let's connect the iteration end node to the blending ratio. And we now have a blend between the min strength and the max strength for perturbation across all iterations. Again, if I were to insert a filter curve here, I could use the curve to fine tune the blending behavior and make it nonlinear. So in a nutshell, use the iteration end node whenever you want to change the value for a node parameter from a repeated node across all repetitions. And please remember that the node will only work in simple loops and not in nested loops. So this ends this tutorial series. Throughout this course, we covered all available iteration nodes and by now you should know enough to get started with building your own loops in your own projects. I hope you enjoyed the series and if you want to explore more iteration stuff, I recommend watching the series on the autogrowth node on our channel because the autogrowth node uses iterations internally to produce a complete plant with a single node. Thanks for watching and happy modeling!